We're recording. They know what this is. We don't. We don't need to do like an intro. They know what this is. At this point, we're five episodes in. Welcome back. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of whatever this is. We still don't have a name yet. By the way, we're still called whatever this is. And uh, thanks for the support on all of our episodes. This week we've got some stuff to discuss. It was the international break. We've got um, the RPLs coming back. Real football is coming back, and we also have some other fun stuff to discuss later on in the pod. So. Um, have fun, you know. Grab, grab a drink, uh, get something to eat, and and we hope you enjoy this uh, episode with us. This week, I'm joined once again by the one, the only, Artem. Artem, how are you doing? And uh, what's up? I'm good, man. I'm good. And you? I'm good, man. Uh, it's been raining here today. I'm giving me the weather report now. It's been raining. It's been really, really hot and humid for the past however many days, and it's raining today. So you know, it's a bit, it's a bit better. The weather's a bit better. But um, it's time to discuss the international break. Now, last week we came in here and we talked about how Artem said that he'd be happy if Russia got uh, four points, a win against Hungary and a draw against Serbia. I said we'd be happy with that as well. It turned out we got six points, actually. Russia played very, very well. They got Serbia and Hungary the fuck out of here, uh, beating Serbia 3-1 with ease. Karavayev scored an absolute banger. And uh, they also beat Hungary by three goals to two. They were three nil up, cruising, and then they sort of bottled it in the second half. Artem, did you watch any of these games? And uh, what did you think? What do you, what do you make of Russia's performance? Uh, is it coming home? Are the Euros coming home? Yeah, I mean, first of all, we watched the first game together, so you should know that I watched that one. Nah, but the listeners um, don't know, man. It's, it's for the know, listeners. But... Okay, okay, fine, whatever. Yeah, so we watched the Serbia against Russia game it was me Hanu and David Sanson uh, we watched it on stream and oh my god Caravaggio's goal unbelievable <laughs> I like I, it just came so out of nowhere I, I think yeah. I screamed I think I screamed yeah, when, I, when I saw <laughs> it broke all of our eardrums in there that was insane it was a great <laughs> goal though it was a great goal and a great game from Russia as well to be fair like obviously if you look at the stats Serbia kind of had the ball more and stuff like yeah. that but Russia were the better team, definitely, and they deserve to win. Um, yeah. the two of the second goal, um, particularly the one outside the outside the box. There was a bit of dodgy defending from Serbia, but look, we yeah. won't complain. Three one's a great result, so yeah. Three one's a great result, and the, the funny thing about uh, Stanislav Cherchesov, what a baller, by the way, is whenever he puts out these lineups, you're like, eh, what, what what are you doing? You put Karavayev at left back, you put. Zerkov at left wing, you put Ionov in the second game as well. He did some skullduggery with the lineups. But he gives us the results, you know. And Kuziaev played like uh, Prime Angel Di Maria on the wings against Hungary. Uh, Anton Miranchuk goes down the middle. Kudryashov started. Is Terchas of the goat, Artem? Honestly, yes. Like, every single time, like you said, when you see the lineups, you're like, oh God, this isn't going to end well. But that's how it was before the World Cup. That's how it was at the World Cup. And yet somehow we just keep grinding at results. He clearly has a set of players that want to play for him, that want to give them their all. And it's working. And to be honest, I'm I'm not gonna question any decisions he makes from now on because he knows exactly what he's doing. And there's no like there's no reason for me to to say he doesn't. Yeah, that's true. And Thing with him is like if this group of players where you've got two players that haven't, you know, that are free agents, you've got uh, players that haven't been in the best form. If they're playing this well, then you can only imagine, given you know, just sort of trust them. What what the how good the next group of players will be, the ones in the U23s. We're going to talk about the U23s in a second as well. But um, no, it's U21s actually. They played uh, their qualification games. They beat Bulgaria by two goals to nil. Gloshenkov and Deviv with the goals and then they lost to Poland in the second game but as you can see they are still probably going to go through to the U21 Euros and Adam what did you of course you didn't watch the Hungary game like you said but what do you think to the, like of course the Nations League doesn't exactly matter that much you're going to maybe get up to group A but how confident are you for the Euros even if we're you know like almost 12 months away at this point. I, I don't agree that the uh, the Nation League doesn't mean anything. Like, it was brought in, you know, 
instead of friendlies so that, that there would be something to play for. And okay, right, when you're in Group B, there's nothing you can really win. Yeah, exactly. But getting up to Group A gets you seeded better in Euros and stuff like that. So I think it's... I think we're playing well. And honestly, do you know what? I genuinely think that Russia is on the way to becoming one of the better teams in Europe. Okay, we're not going to yeah. reach the, the heights of France, Germany, Spain, those countries. But I definitely think that we can we can get up there with, you know, the likes of maybe Switzerland or teams like that just yeah, below yeah. that top tier. Croatia. And yeah, I'd, be, yeah. I'd be so happy. Yeah, Croatia is a good one as well. Like, I'd be delighted if Russia can keep going on the trajectory they're going on. Now, saying that, okay, it's only two games. You know, the Euros are still ahead of us. We could flop at the Euros. But I'm really, really enjoying watching the national team these days. What about you? What do you think? I agree. I don't think there's much to disagree with that. I think um, what Turkey is the other team in the group, I really think Russia with six points in the first two games really should win the, the you know, this Nations League group and qualify to the League A. And there there are some teams in that League A, you know, there's, I think, Iceland, Bosnia, Herzegovina. There, there are some teams in there that you would think, you know, Russia could actually beat these guys. Like, yes, you've got Bosnia and Poland, you've got Iceland, you've got uh, Sweden and Croatia. I think these are teams that you've got Switzerland. I, yeah, you're right, actually. I really think Russia could beat you. Know, you know what, though? Even yeah. then, go up to teams like Netherlands, teams like Portugal. I think Russia could hold them to a draw. Like, I don't think that, that like, over one game, period. Okay, if you're playing 10 games against each other, then, you know, Netherlands are coming out in top seven or eight times. But I think over one game, I think Russia have a chance. Like I, I, I genuinely think that Russia at the moment is one of the better teams in Europe, and that yeah. that could be just be, be by bias. That could just be me being absolutely diluted, Rabina. Um, but look, that that's my opinion. Yeah, that's fair. No, I don't. I don't think they could. I don't think they can beat like the top, you know, Netherlands and. and these teams or even hold them to a draw i think maybe you know just like put 11 minutes at the back and scupper a nil nil draw or something but i'd still say that these teams but that's are what we're good at that's what the russian league is all about the russian league is all about defending it is but you don't really like you don't really gain much respect out of it do you because i think what a couple of teams really i think i don't even remember the results but denmark held england to a draw and uh ukraine I played well against whoever I, the hell they played against. So, like... I disagree that you don't get the respect out of it. Like, did you see the uh, the stuff with Jose Mourinho? Obviously, the, the Tottenham documentary has come out now. Yeah, we're going to talk so about a lot that. So, uh, a lot of clips are coming out. Did you see that that um, clip of him? Oh, it may, may not have been actually from that documentary. It may have been on an interview of being sports. Um, but it was basically a clip of him saying that, like, a lot of managers hide behind, oh, we play good football. Yeah, when they don't get results, that. and he he says that he would rather, you know, go into a game and maybe everybody, all the fans think, oh, this team is sitting back and everything. But if they win at the end of the game, he's had the plan and executed it. It's not like it's not like that wasn't the plan. It's not like oh yeah, but like it, guess... it's playing the, it's playing the cards you're dealt, and if you're dealt with like not the best team. And you can't attack. You like you can't go out and start attacking Italy, and you can't go out and start attacking Belgium as a team like Russia. You're gonna have to sit back. And if it works, then it works. It worked for us at the World Cup against Spain. That's the thing, though. That's the that's the thing for me is that of course you can get the odd result, and it's still a big achievement. But if you look at a team like Poland, Bosnia, Denmark, Iceland, Sweden, Croatia, Switzerland, you can go out and attack these teams and have a good chance to win more, like you know, more than fifty percent of the time. I think no that, way. Yes, no, you no way. No, you don't think can't. Russia can no. beat Bosnia? No, no, okay, right. If you're talking Bosnia or Poland, I'm not talking about Bosnia or Poland. I'm talking about the really big games. I'm talking no, about no, Spain exactly, in the exactly, last 16 exactly, of the exactly, World Cup. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm saying. That you can beat the sort of mid-table teams in the League A, you know, Poland and them. And you can oh, yeah, okay. on a consistent basis. And that, I think, is a better indicator of quality than, you know, having an odd... Nil nil draw against the Netherlands, but you're not actually better than. Well, I think you need both. I don't think you can you have both. one without the other. You need both, but like the true indicator of quality to me would be when you're actually able to go toe to toe against Italy or the Netherlands, like Croatia and them do now. Croatia lost four two, but they were playing really well against at France at one point. But six years ago, that wouldn't have been the case. 
And no, I'm, but think about it this way as well. Okay, right. They lost, but they lost four two. They're bottom of their group now. Had they when they gone one 0 up, had they been able to keep it really tight at the back and even hold France to a draw, that would have been a better result. Like this, this result could lead to them getting relegated from that group. Yeah, it could, but you're still not going to say that Croatia are a weak team, are you? Like, no, no, but I don't think I'd say any teams in this category A are weak, so to so to speak. I think they're all decent teams. Yeah. I don't know, man. I, I honestly think like a better indicator of quality would be, of course, you know, we're talking right now and who knows, you might lose 4-0 to Turkey in the next game. But I think Russia, I definitely agree they're on a great path and they are going to... They should be in the League A, in the in the league in League A. But I don't know if they're able to keep up with with the really really top teams, if you know that. I'm not talking about France and Germany and Spain. I'm talking about the teams just London. I'm talking about the Denmarks, the Croatias, the all them. Like yeah. we just we like yeah, like we just discussed. Um, but I, yeah, yeah. We the thing is, we should we should get the Group A at this yeah. at this stage. With the way that the results have gone, I think the results went perfectly for Russia. Yeah. In okay. every way during okay. that first international break. So I'm just hoping the next time we can beat Turkey, we can beat whoever we can the next time out as well. Yeah. Um, that would be great. And he- here's another thing I uh, tweeted about and also noticed during the international break. It's it's a tangent of sorts. Is that the RPL is actually quite respected when you look at. Uh, almost all of the major footballing nations because you've, if you look at let's look at some of these countries you've got Poland, Bosnia uh, Iceland I think Sweden, Croatia Switzerland not Switzerland sorry Ukraine Norway Austria, Romania every like every semi-major country uh, Serbia, Hungary all of them they have a decent amount of RPL players in them for some countries like you know uh, Georgia, Kazakhstan, Belarus RPL players are like the top players in there things but even the really really respectable nations like Sweden they played with Marcus Berg and Christopher Olsen in both of their games you had Norman starting for uh, Norway you had like three or four RPL players in, in Poland's team Shimat Nikola Vlasic is starting for uh, Croatia so it's only like the really top like Belgium England Portugal France these countries that really sort of frown at the RPL maybe it's because they have a really large talent pool but it is at the RPL by at least the nations and their coaching staff is actually quite respected. And uh, you know, yeah, that 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 is a very good point. And I think that the RPL is respected. It is the sixth best league statistically. Yeah. Okay, seventh at the moment, best league statistically in Europe. But I think what's important there to note why the bigger countries maybe don't respect it as much is because they've all got leagues of their own. Yeah, like for example, Spain, Germany, France, England. You know, Portugal even. All of those countries have leagues that are better than the RPL. Yeah. And f- for that reason, they don't need to look at players in the RPL for their players, if that makes sense. Yeah. But even then, like a lot of, like even Portugal over the years have had players. Adair being an example right now, yeah. you know. Um, Joao Mario. Joao Mario. Um, who's that centre-back who used to play for Zena? Bruno Alves. Bruno Alves, him. Yeah. yeah. So no, that's true. I th- I think it just like I think any any country that doesn't have a league better than the RPL, of course, RPL players are going to be used. But I I think that does show that the the league is progressing too. I think it's a yeah. really positive time for Russian football. Yeah. To be honest, personally, yeah, and even you know, um, Brazil and Argentina who have no shortage of of world class players to look at. Even like Hulk used to play for Brazil. Even. Uh, What's his name? Paredes and them, uh, Mamana and them, I think, got call-ups for Argentina. So it, it's a regular thing for like these nations to look at Russia. But then the question yeah. has to be asked is like, Wanderson's eligible to play for Belgium, for example. If Wanderson is like far and away the best player in the league, do you think he'll get a call-up for the Belgian national team? That's those sort of the questions that you've got to ask is that, yes, they've got a really big talent pool, but is there also a level of snobbery to it, you know? Are these... since, when the, since when does Wanderson... Have a Belgian passport. Wanderson or is born in the Belgium. Netherlands and played his entire career in Belgium. He's, he's he's like he's a okay. No, he was born in Brazil, Brazil, but like his entire career, he's mostly been in Belgium and then. 
Are you sure he's yes. eligible? Yeah, look at it. He okay, that's that's that... Ajax, and he's never played in Brazil. Okay, that's that's a bit crazy. Yeah. I mean, if that's the case, you know, I wouldn't be. Oh, man, what the hell currency is that? Oh, that's the rupees because my laptop is like used to. I hate, I hate it as well. It automatically like redirects to Transmarket India, so like it really uh, messes with my head. But yeah, he's worth eleven million. Too little, way too little. But look, I think that Jesus, he actually does have a citizenship. I think that if if he decided to declare for Belgium, mm-hmm. or even if he decided to play for Brazil, it doesn't matter which one. I think that he'd get in the team at some point. I think for friendlies at least, because if you're if you're looking at it this way, right? Belgium have called up worse players than him. Yeah, that's exactly. They called up players like Torg and Hazard when they weren't great. Okay, they're young, yeah. but they've called up a lot of players. Like there's a lot of players in the Belgium team that you'd look at and be like, "Who? Why is he here?" Exactly. Yeah, you can see a few of those in this list as well. Leandro uh, Trossard, like. They what called up, uh, what's his name? They called they called up Thomas Vermeilen while he was playing in. Uh, Japan, look, see Thomas. Exactly, yeah, exactly. So. But that, that's why I think, like, he's better than Adnan Yanis. Like, yeah, already he is. That's so, true. so there, there's no reason for him not to be called up, really. So it, all, yeah. you know, it all depends. If he, if he gets like, to be one of the top five players in the league, I know you already think he is. Yeah, he is. But if if it becomes a like you know well known fact that Wanderson is one of the best five players in the league, and he decides, okay, I want to play for Belgium, then maybe they call him up. But yeah. then again, I don't know what the story is with Belgium and if they want to call up actual you know people who are born in Belgium or anything like that. You know, there's always a lot of politics from players. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's naturalized. True. That's true. Uh, moving on from the international break, because I think we had a nice little discussion there. Your man's Lovren scored a goal. Uh, you didn't bring it up, but I have. The goat. The uh, goat. No, no, they lost. That's what you said as well. They lost. It didn't. Really no, 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 no. Let's. It doesn't matter. No, 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 no. Let's forget about that. The loss was not down to him. I think he gave away a penalty, but it was still not. A he gave away a penalty. <laughs> exactly. I think I don't. I I didn't watch the game. I just saw he got the yellow card, and France scored a penalty the next time. So <laughs> that's 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 what's wrong with your man's man. He, he does these little things, but at the end of the day, he's just he ain't it. Look, uh, we've got a highlight reel here. We've got a human highlight reel. And I mistakes. No, but what's what's his rating? Seven. Exactly. He got the what the third best in the team. Yeah, look at that. Look at look at Nikola Vlasic holding it down. Yeah, That's he got it. the third best in the team. What are you saying? Like it's the team lost. that got to the the team that got to the final of the uh, the uh, the World Cup. Still lost. Uh, look, we don't care. We don't care because he's still the goal. His goal was amazing. He's not. Anyway, moving on, club football is back and we are starting off with an absolute banger. Tambo take on Ufa at the early kickoff on Saturday. Be glued to your screens as you watch Adesoy Oiwole take on Alexander Bellino in the Clash of the Titans. Adam, are you going to be watching this game? No, I'm not. Yeah, good answer. Uh, <laughs> this week, Saturday, they finally got proper, um, by the way, like kickoff times. Because for like the past three weeks, it's been seven games taking place at once and then one game on the other day. This week, there's like yeah. some staggered kickoffs, some sense of uh, scheduling. CSK Spartak, obviously the big one. Your man's the Führer got his first goal for CSK in a friendly against Arsenal. Uh, it doesn't count. It counts. If it doesn't count. count. It, counts. it doesn't count. Um, these are these are Pele-esque goals where he counts anything that he played like in yeah uh, Grant Goy, Goy scored in the playground outside his house it doesn't count Pele is disrespected man Pele is uh, a fraud no he's not yes he is Pele is not a fraud <laughs> nah, Pele no he's not but his tweets yeah, make, his tweets make are me a want bit, a bit dodgy he's, he's a bit dodgy his tweets make me wish he was a fraud yeah he's, anyway yeah anyway CSK, Spartak, Zenit, Arsenal, Rostov, Lokomotiv. These are probably the games you'll want to uh, take a look at. Artem, what do you think of these games? What do you think is going to be? Dynamo Rubin could be nice, actually. Um, I think the last three games on that list, and the Dynamo Rubin are going to be the ones. Yeah. And you know what? Ahmed Sochi might be good as well. Um, top of the table clash, that is. So yeah. it, it, it one of those games where you know, you're keeping an eye on the score and you've got a stream ready just in case you want to watch it. 
and yeah. one of those games. But the other three are Discord worthy, by the way. Uh, speaking of Discord, if you guys, if any of you guys want to join us while we just simply chat and uh, you know watch these games live on like Discord, not not like not live stream, but like off the record, just uh, hit. Yeah, we don't we see. don't have we don't have a stream for you to watch. Wink, wink. Yeah, we we definitely don't. Um, we definitely don't. But of course, if you do come on and if you really want to watch with us, we could of course figure something out. So. Um, anyway, CSK Sparta. Who do you think wins that? Mm. That's such a weird transition from me, but whatever. Yeah, uh, you know, I think it's probably going to end up being a draw. Like, you know, after after international breaks, I'm always kind of torn as to who's going to actually play well and who's not. Yeah, I think it's it might be a draw. CSK have been decent. Yeah, Spartak have been very good. So mm-hmm. I'm gonna say one one to be honest. Yeah, something like that. I hope they need to beat Arsenal, get back on track. Otherwise, it might be crisis season over there. Rostov, you know, every time we play Arsenal, I have nightmares oh, because yeah, the first time I went to watch Zenit play in Saint Petersburg, we played against Arsenal at home, and we of course lost that game. Man, you remember so, that that game? Like I think it was in the winter of 2018 when. Uh, then it were away to Arsenal and Evan Skangwa had the best game of his life. They won 4-2. Hernani scored in that game, I think. And then Levashov was like climbing up on the rails and celebrating with the fans. It was a dark yeah. time. It was. Uh, Rostov Lokomotiv takes place every single month, I feel like. Every month there's a Rostov Lokomotiv game going on. Speaking of Lokomotiv, um, it is time for us to laugh at them again. It's a weekly segment. But we are going to laugh at Lokomotiv once again because uh, they they took part in a friendly against the Russian under-19 squad and lost 3-1. Francois Kamano scored for them. And this wasn't like, you know, like a squad made up of academy graduates or, or anything like that. You had proper players. You had Zeboglyadov, you had Raikovic, Eder, Kamano, Jaroliddinov, Rybczynski. There is no excuse for them losing this game. And I just think it's it's time for us to laugh at them, Artem. What did you think of this uh, world class result? Oh man, it's ridiculous. You know, at first when I saw the result, at first when I saw the result, I actually thought it was the under twenty ones, and I was gonna say this proves my point that the under twenty ones could probably beat the senior team. But this is even worse. Like this is absolutely awful. There's absolutely no excuse for it. Like, how? How does that even happen? They this is, you know, this is this is when you play football manager, right? And your first game as football manager is against your under yeah, yeah, under yeah, 19s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, it, that's what this is. And it's even if it's like the national Russian under 19 team, I had a look at that squad. It, there's like one player which actually plays in the RPL, like it's in the senior squad. It's all like Chelsea youngsters and stuff. And they they walked in like they're gonna you know score seven goals with that Michael Jordan. Chicago Bulls music in the background, and then it, you go on to lose three one to the under nineteen. This te- this is the team that's going to represent Russia in the Champions League without Alexei Miranchuk and Barinov. Like, oh man, they're going to do so badly. They're going to do so badly, honestly. And any the- team in the Champions League would be lucky to have them in their group. In fact, so much so that I wish Zena could have them in their group. <laughs> honestly, ah, uh, this is it, it's. It's worrying. And it, like, you know, people joke about women's football and like, like those all those years ago, like the Dallas under 15s beat the US women's team. This is, this is as bad as that. Like, these guys are paid properly. These guys, everything is fine with them. They're, you can't even blame the tactics. You can't even blame the manager because it's under 19. Like, they should really be ashamed of this result. Wow. Yeah, it's a. Uh... It's awful. It really is awful. It really is awful. Um, But you know what? The one positive from it is maybe, just maybe, the under-19s are going to be insane. Maybe even if we produce three or four good players out of that team, Mm -hmm. Russia could be set for the generation. So, Lokomotiv are uh, winning the battle. I mean, losing the battle, but they're going to win the war, as they say. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Did, I wonder, I wonder, did any locomotive players play against them? Is there any team from them or Kazanka against them? I don't actually remember. They might have been one or two, but I, I don't really remember. 
Uh, speaking of locomotive, uh, we're going to move on to some transfer rumors and a fun little segment we're going to do in a minute. Uh, locomotive were linked to Alexander Sorloth. Now, if you don't know who Alexander Sorloth is, you may know, okay, he plays for Trabzon Spore, might be, you know, a player that locomotive could be able to sign. I'm here to tell you right now, he's not going. Okay. He's, he's a player that's been linked to Red Bull Leipzig. Apparently, he signed a whole contract with them and everything. He lit up this uh, Turkish Super League last year. I think he's the highest, like he's the most valuable player in the league. The last club he's going to go to is Lokomotiv Moscow. So I just wanted to laugh at that. Um, I don't know, what do you think about this potential move? And if, if somehow Lokomotiv could pull it off? I don't think they will. There's no chance they will. But um, There's no chance they will. Yeah, there's no chance. There's no chance they will. Even if you look at his market value. Yeah, do you really no, think? No, no, no. Do you re- there's no, first of all, there's no way they're paying it. And second of all, like the amount the locomotive probably would be willing to pay is probably about eight million because they're ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and there's no way that's getting accept- accepted. So no, it's not going to happen. Um, gonna come out, the fans can have their, you know, their dreams and everything else, but that's not happen. You got to come back to reality someday. Yeah. Okay. Semin, Semin is a. Uh, and you don't even know if he has Semin's character. That's also important. Yeah, he scores goals, but like. What's the point? No. Exactly. He's, exactly. he's no Jamalat then off. Uh, speaking of transfers again, I was saying something and then I've completely. Savoy. Uh, no other really Lee like, Savoy. Lee Savoy. Oh, yeah. Lee Savoy. Friend of the show. He's gone to Dinamo Moscow. Friend of uh, the friend of the show. Yeah, friend of a friend of the show. So he's basically a friend of the show. Uh, he Tula bought him for 600k, and then a month later, he, they, he's been sold for thrice the amount. I think this is a very good transfer for Dinamo. He'll help them out in uh, Europe and stuff. What do you What do you think of this uh, transfer item? You're really anxious to talk about it. Oh, I think he's a great player. Yeah. Like I, I think he's. You know, when when I first saw him um, playing like a couple of years ago, I thought he was, I didn't didn't quite think he was RPL level, but he's really come on in the last. Uh, last 18 months or so he's been fantastic so i think it's a good move for him but i think it's a good move for dynamo so yeah two million you can't really, can't really go wrong either i just i'm i'm not sure where he's going to fit in the squad i guess shimanski on one wing lisa Wall on the other wing and i guess philip or in the knee in the middle they'll do something they'll figure it out i guess but um good they're going to make up a new formation just for all their attackers yeah, they've got so many attackers. They were probably going to sell maybe one or two before the window closes, but whatever. We, we've not had any major transfers. We do have a lot of uh, fun transfers. Adil Rami finally has a new club in Boa Vista. Olivier Thiel's brother has joined Tambov on a loan. Artur Yusupov has gone to the retirement home known as Sochi. Flamarion Jr., I've never heard this guy, but it's a very rotor Volgograd transfer. They're playing football manager, really. They're playing football manager and everybody else is playing pairs. <laughs> the players they sign is just mad. Uh, Lamek Banda has gone to Maccabi Natania. Never really heard of them. Rostov's Icelandic players have all failed. They're, they're off. We have had a couple of rumors though, if I can remember correctly. Nikola Vlasic has been linked to Lyon because they're going to sell, I think, Rene Adelaide and, and even Memphis Depay. Also been linked to Napoli and Atlanta. Uh, Artem, do you think he'll move to any of those clubs? And would you, where would you like him to go? He's linked to West Brom as well. Uh, I don't want him to leave. I don't want him, us to lose one of the best players in the league. Um, unlike Miranchuk, who obviously one of the best players in the league as well, he's Russian. We want to see Russians go abroad. We want to see them test themselves. We want to keep the best players in the league. Yeah. We want to keep Hulk level, promise level players in the league. Mm-hmm. That's just a fact. Eventually, they're going to leave. Yeah. But while we can keep them, while we can build the coefficients, we need to keep them. So if, if out of those three clubs, um, Napoli, I can kind of see it happening. Atlanta, mm-hmm. why would they buy here when they've just bought Miran Yeah. Um, unless Miran has been like, you know, the agent and that. It's like, oh yeah, pick another player from the RPL yeah. to play with. And he's picked him. Although... Come on, it's not not mm-hmm. what happened. Yeah, Leon, I can see happening, especially if uh, 
the boy is going to leave, especially if they're going to. Who else did you say was going to leave? Rene Adelaide. If Rene Adelaide is going to leave as well, I can I can see it happening. But um, in terms of likelihood, I'd say probably Lyon, then Napoli, and then Atlanta. Yeah. What about you? I don't think I. You know what? If you ever seen Nikola Vlasic play or score or do anything on the pitch, he always seems so pissed off with his teammates. Like the other day, he like, he against Aga, against Akmat, he scored an absolutely banging free kick, and like, he just he didn't celebrate or anything. And I don't think that's because he wants to leave or anything. I just think that's the kind of guy he is, a guy that like looks you straight in your soul. But um, I think he needs to CSK in the Europa League this season, and I really think they could do well because they've got uh, players with European experience. And then some teams. They don't do as well in in uh, the national league as well as they do in you know the Europa League and stuff. So I think they could go far in that. I hope they reach like the round of sixteen, maybe even the quarterfinals. I think Vlasic is going to leave by next year, next window. I think next um, next summer window. I think he'll be gone, and hopefully you know they can get his price up, get like twenty five, thirty million for him. I think that'll be a very very good deal for um, CSK. Do you think they get twenty five, thirty million though? Yeah. Yeah, I think they are. I think yeah, they'll get probably know. 20. Just simply because if if he's leaving, it's because he'll want to leave. And I think when a player wants to leave, the, the price usually doesn't hold up quite as much as the club would like. I don't. I think it will depend a lot on this season. I think if they do reach like the quarters or the round of 16 and he's been their best player far and away, I think they can get 25, 30 for him. But even if he has like a, you know, even if he has a good RPL season and a mid-European season, I think he'll get like 20 million at least. But um, fingers crossed. Sparta really like ruined Russian football when they sold Promise for like 18 million. That move, like that was so bad for Russian football because he's one of the best players the league has ever seen. You sold him for 18 million. Like, what does that say for the rest of the league? Yeah, but as well as that. Not only did they sell him involved. for 18 million, he ended up being shit. Yeah, and then so what, he's, what, at, like, he's at Ajax now, he's doing well. But I know, I know, but his immediate move after Russia was... Yeah, that's what people are going to associate with Russia, you know. Um, but I was watching Krasava yesterday, the uh, the video, the Wagner Love one. Yeah. And one of the things that really, like, I was taken aback of... I didn't realise that Joe... You know the the Brazilian striker yeah, yeah, yeah. moved from CSK to um, Man City for twenty four million. Joe. Yeah, I remember Joe. Did he move to Man City or did he move from Man City? No, he moved to Man City. Yeah, that was like from a- CSK for twenty four million. That is wild. But that was when they Look had what year that was. That was two thousand and eight, yeah. and he moved for twenty four million. We can't get a player to move outside the league for 24 million now. That's wild. That is wild. Do, like, like 2008, though, I think that's when Ronaldo moved to Real Madrid. The, the, the biggest transfer in the world was like, what, 90 million or whatever it was, euros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now it's 200 and something, 220 million euros. And we haven't sold, okay, apart from Hulk to China, we haven't sold a player for that kind of caliber. A transfer. <laughs> that's that actually. <laughs> And Joe, what, was Joe like insane? Oh yeah, he was. He was pretty good. No, he was good. He was good at CSK, but like after that, he was so bad. <laughs> uh, Ahmed Musa went to Leicester City for like a cool twenty million just when they won the league. Remember well, I that? always forget that move happened. Yeah. To be honest, nah, he, he scored against Barcelona in a friendly, and then after that, he disappeared. He came back, yeah. I think, for like, a, and now he's in Saudi Arabia or something. But uh. That move is actually quite bad, but the, the Spartak did really ruin that. Look at look at this window though. There is Joe Rob, Robinho for forty three million, Craig Bellamy for fifteen and a half million, Wright Phillips eleven and a half million. Nigel yeah, but Dion, the thing is, all those. Million. The thing is, you look at Jay Given, you look at Sean Wright Phillips, you look at Wayne Bridge, you look at Craig Bellamy. All of them ended up having a good career at sea. Joe did not. I mean. 24 million. million is a lot, actually. Uh, he's one of, I think, he's still one of the. And this is completely off topic, by the way. We have all. We're talking about Joe. This wasn't on our docket. 
but if you look at biggest, it, look, he was the fourth. Uh, he's number one. No wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. No, no, no. No, 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 no. This is the wrong. This is the wrong table. Hold up. Please excuse this part of our podcast. We are being dumb. Uh, yeah. See, see. Parade is forty million. Parade is eleven. Forty million. No, no, no. Hang on, hang he's on. Not eleven. He's like so. Fifth. He's fifth. The f- the first. Hold up. Yeah. The first one that we looked at, right? Yeah. Go on. No, he's seventh. Okay. Yeah. So he's the seventh biggest transfer out of Russia. Joe. That's crazy. How much did he move for to CSK? Uh, I don't know. Hold on. Let's see. Until that loads up. Willian actually was. Why? Has... That's so strange. Like, I know it was like the Chelsea era and the Anzi era. But Ezekiel Garay moving for 24 million. Spartak really did ruin the league, didn't they? Umar Niasis, 18 million. That was my Alexander Kakorin to Angie and then back to Dinamo in the space of two weeks was my favorite transfer saga of all time. Umar Niasi went for 18 million, though. We have to talk about that. I don't care if Lasic gets one goal for the rest of the campaign, he's worth more than Omar Niasse. Okay, but hang on. Salomon Omar Niasse, right? Sorry. Omar Niasse. He still, he did better than Joe. And Joe How was still more expensive than him. 25th, man. Uh, Joe moved to CSKA for 5 million. That was a very good flip from CSK. That was a good flip. Jesus man. Christ. Uh, but we need at least like four or five of the league's best players to go for 25, upwards of 25 million now. Because uh, Joe, Joe needs to move forward on that list. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, after that uh, massive tangent, I don't even remember where we started out from. No, me neither. Yeah. Uh, we have one other transfer move before we, before we move on to more transfer fun. Artem's man's Artem's a client actually because Artem is his PR agent. Alexander Kokorin. No, just... no, no, no. Then we have two transfers to talk about. I thought you were talking about my other PR guy. Who's your other PR guy? I'll tell you now in a minute. Let's just do this one first. Yeah, nah. Um, he just, Artem just mentioned that Kokorin uh, moved to the like Dinamo and uh, Anzi in the space of two weeks. He's not played a single minute for Spartak and AS Roma have shown interest in him. I actually think this is legitimate. The rumors, at least, at the very least, are legitimate because he apparently really loves Rome. And Roma are the kind of weirdo club that would spend money on him. No, like, that's not a slight against Kokor and it's just like a transfer they would do. Uh, I think it depends on the transfer fee. I think he'll agree to it in a second. But I don't know if it, it, it's really going to happen. Atom, what do you think of this move? I know you were... Uh, Probably were quite excited just looking at this tweet. Uh, yeah, first of all, I absolutely love what that happened. But I have a few questions. Like, okay, maybe the reason that he hasn't played... So, okay, I know he's been injured, but maybe the reason he hasn't played is because there's this interest and, you know, you can't register for... Or you can't play for a certain amount of clubs in a certain yeah. amount of time or something like that. Yeah. But um, I'd love it to happen. The one thing is... What's the story with him getting a visa? Because obviously he's a criminal. <laughs> so <laughs> Is he still a criminal? I mean, I'm pretty sure once you're convicted, that's it. Like you have a no, 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 no. You it's have, on your record. It's, it's not like you're like on a no-fly list, are you? You can like still... No, no, no. He's not on a no-fly list. But I just think that like, okay, maybe Italy he'd be allowed into. But you know, there's other countries where he might not be. I think they might get him. Like I feel a, like he might have trouble getting to be. Or like a diplomatic I don't know. He's a diplomat at this yeah, point. Yeah, anyway, anyway. I hope it happens. Uh, I really hope yeah. it happens. I'd love him to go there. And he clearly loves Rome. One of his heroes was Totti. Um, so it would be fantastic. But I just don't quite... I won't believe it until I see it, really. Yeah. I mean, Rooney and Balotelli and Joey Barton and him have were like a, they've been in jail and stuff. And they keep flying around the world. So it's not... I don't know. But it would be a very, very interesting move if it did happen. Who's your other PR guy? What's the other rumor? The other rumor? Because I have the Spartak. Oh, yeah, it is. Go on. Introduce that rumor to us and tell us what you think about it. 
Okay, so Kuzev has been a free agent for a good while now, um, since probably July. Right. So, he has been... He's, he's interested a couple of clubs around Europe. There's one in France, I think it might have been Lyon. Um, Alaves as well, or Alphabet as uh, Hanu likes to Alphabet, call them. Yeah, Alphabet. Alphabet. Um, and then Rangers as well in Scotland. So, you know, all of us, pretty much every Russian football fan I'd say is quite excited saying, okay, yeah, we'd like him to go abroad. Um, if he's coming back, I'd want him at Zenit because... Mm-hmm. You know, he's a good player. I like him personally. A lot of people like him. Hannah doesn't like him, but he's just look, we'll move on from that. I like him as a bloke, but like anyway, Hannah doesn't like him. So no. yesterday, rumors came out saying that uh, Spartak have made him an offer. And if this is the case, and if he goes there, I'd be so upset. Yeah, you need to like drop him from your PR firm after this. You I'd left, be so upset. Your fan because the, needs to end. Yeah, he he. You know, he left Zenit saying that he wants to go somewhere abroad. And yeah. if he ends up coming back to Russia, only to play for the rivals, that no. would be absolutely... Just, I, I, I'd live in Spain, but the S is silent. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you know what? Um, I like read like an article and it said that if he wants to return to... I mean, if he, if he doesn't find a move abroad, then like Zenit have the first option on him. Or he's at least given them a verbal agreement that he'll negotiate with them first. So the, this move, the likelihood of it happening is pretty slim. But if it does, and I don't think all Zenit fans need to like stop stop their fandom of Belas Jaya. Imagine being linked to Alaves and just crying for a European move to end up at Spartak Moscow. People were joking that Spart- uh, Moscow is a good European city. It's a high-class European city. But like... Man, it is, to be fair. It is. It, it is very good, but like, that would be, he wouldn't even fit their system, even though he can play everywhere, he wouldn't fit. Tesco's a weird bloke, don't know what he, what's going on in his mind. But, um, right, so uh, before we like fully move off transfer rumors and stuff, it's a, it's a really interesting uh, small thing I read, that when CSK signed Chidera Ajuke for 11.5 million, they actually did this deal on an app called Transfer Room. This isn't a sponsored segment, by the way. And it's basically like branded as, as Tinder for football players, where basically you have a club and then a load of pairs. You just put in your requirements. It's like Transfer Market, but a bit more official. And you can do that entire deal through an app. So this is, I think, the biggest deal that has actually been done on their app. $11.5 million for a UK. And they also uh, loaned out one of their players through this app. Now, Artem, quickly, does this... Is this actually... What do you think of this? And do you think it's actually really good for CSK that they're doing things through apps? Or is it a bit worrying that you're basically using an app to get your new star striker? Um, I think it's kind of sick, to be honest. It's obviously like, the thing is, more more things are going to be going on, on through technology, through phones, through apps, all that kind of stuff in the future. It is cool that it's going down this way, but it's just, it's weird that a club would use that as their main source of scouting a player if that makes sense yeah i don't i don't doubt that they did their own scouting after they they matched with him so to speak but uh yeah it it is strange what do you think no i think it's it's quite interesting and they they did say that they were looking into the player anyways but i think it's it's a good good thing because you can you know directly talk to the clubs and there's no agent nonsense involved and then you know it's it's an easy it seems like a convenient way to do it and it's it'll be fun to see how it actually evolved but that was a small tidbit but you wanted to throw out there now we're going to move into our most produced segment yet we've spent a good 15 minutes in pre-production on this segment and what we're basically going to be doing is we're going to be making transfer deals you know making mock transfer deals i'm going to be the selling club which we have you know it's going to vary i'm going to be the selling club and artem is going to be the buyer he has been playing 8d chess for the past 15 minutes trying to figure out a master plan to make krasnodar better He's going to basically offer deals, offer swaps, offer with money. And we're going to see where that takes us. We're going to hopefully have a fun time. And without further ado, Artem, start off. What are you trying to propose to me here? Okay, so first of all, you're not going to be selling club. You're going to be selling clubs. Because I'm, yeah, I'm looking to, to make Cross and I better here from a few different perspectives. Yeah. Um, so the first thing I'm looking at Cross and squad, and 
I should have really realised when I picked Krasnodar that um that they actually have a pretty solid squad already. So there's not really too many places where I can improve them. But mm. saying that, what I'm going to do first is go down to the strikers. Okay. And I'm looking there and I'm seeing, okay, right, they've got Marcus Berg as their first striker. He's 34. Ari's also 34. Um, if Berg gets injured and Ari gets injured, it's which is entirely possible, they could be in a bit of a problem. So I'm going to be going over to um, to Locomotive Moscow. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to oh, say okay. to them, okay, I listen, you're going. you have a, a defensive midfielder right now who's injured. Your best defensive midfielder. Um, you know, Krzyzewiak's not going to be going up as, as, uh, as much forward as you'd like him to anymore because Barinov is not there to do the work. Right. So, how about you give me your, your striker who's been a flop for you, um, Fyodor Smolov, and in return I will give you Gazinski. How does that sound? I like the idea. I like the idea. If I was Lokomotiv, I think Lokomotiv are going to move him on anyway. But I think Smolov for Gazinski. I, I want, I want, uh, I want two to three million along with Kaczynski, and then he's yours. Okay, let me tell you why that's not going to happen. <laughs> why, why are you being so stingy for two to three million? Why would I get... Look, look at, look at Fyodor Smolov's market value. What is it? We don't get... Oh my God. No, 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 no. What is his transfer value? <laughs> it's six million. What's Kaczynski's transfer value? Seven million, but, 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 bitch, you owe me money. No, no, no. Take I don't, the transfer. No, 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 no. I don't owe you money. I, I have Krichowiak and Balinov and Magiv and Kulikov and a few other guys that can play. That you really need a backup striker. If Marcus Berg goes, we have. We don't need to sell Smolov. He's already an option that we know we can use. Uh, you know, he, he still played. He scored goals. So we're not in a hurry to sell. Fyodor Smolov or get a CDM in. You're the one who needs a backup striker desperately you because... You, you said you don't need to get a CDM in. Do you really want to trust Kulikov or Makiev in Champions League? Do you want to trust them there? Like, is, is it really worth it for you to not take this deal? Like, Listen, man. See, I'm not... I'm not, I'm not I don't take, feel like I'm being too outlandish here. We just want 2 million... And Galinsky and Smolov is yours. He's a club legend for you. He's definitely gonna want to go there. He can, can offer. Wait, how about this, right? Kaczynski and one million. Kaczynski and one million. One and a half, and he's yours. Deal. Okay, deal. There you go. Okay, fist bump because we're not allowed yeah. to uh, shake hands. About. Yeah, shake anyway. hands. Anyway, okay. So obviously now that's left me um, with a Kaczynski-shaped hole in my team. Yeah. So. Let's move over to the Zenit squad. Okay. We are moving over to the Zenit You just stole Gazinski and then just said, oh, that's left me with a Gazinski shaped hole. Yeah, because it has. But I have a plan for it, don't I? Let's see what your plan is. Okay. Zenit. You have a, such a strong squad. You know, isn't it such a shame that you don't have a good goalkeeper? Okay, and I know at this point, lots of the people are saying, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, what, are you, what are you talking about? Look, I have a plan. Okay, how about this? You give me Azdoyev and Yurokin, and I'll give you Safonov, the best goalkeeper in the league. Any self-respecting man would throw you out of the club offices at this point. You so you're are- not going to take the deal? You're not going to take the I'm best keeper in, in the league la- for a la- player you don't play and a decent central midfield. Decent, he's one of the best. You want me to give you two players for a in not an injury for a mistake prone twenty year old goalkeeper when I already have three goalkeepers and I'm already like I could get Denis Adamo for like a million of you. You really want me you, to give you Osdoev and Erokin. Okay, fine. Well, I'm happy to go for just as Doiv, and you're telling me that's not a fair deal? If anything, you're robbing me here. No, give me five million extra and then... And Osdoyev. And for... And Safonov for Osdoyev. Yes. 
Oh Jesus, you're mental. Get out of here. Yeah, you are mental. You you just walked in here and you want Osdo, who is one of the most important players in that squad. And I have no. Okay, hold up. Let Let's see if we can come to a. Let's see if we can uh, do something to to sort of make this. You're not gonna give me Utkin. I know you're not. Uh, you're not gonna give me Tony Villena. He's foreign as well. I uh, okay. You know what? I'll I'll give you Osdoev and Irokin if you give me Utkin and Safonov. Hang on, Safonov and Utkin for Irokin and yeah. Osdoev. Yeah. No. Could you be could you be compared by some money to go along with that? No. <laughs> no. Uh, I honestly, you missed your chance. Fuck you. <laughs> nah, your deal is so outland. Nobody's gonna take that. Man, if if for real, Krasnodar came to Zenit as a Zenit fan, I wouldn't mind taking that because I feel like as though as well as he as good as he is, we have a few good. Uh, Good midfielders in there. No, what are you got... talking about? We do, we do don't mean? have any good midfielders. There's no other replacement in the squad. I mean, Leon Musai was played 17 minutes of professional football. Is going to ship in. Hang on, hang on. The way we're playing right now, Wilmar Barrios is playing CDM, but so is uh, Douglas Santos, right? If we got a central midfielder from elsewhere, we could replace him. Yeah, but you don't want to give me that. You just want Osdoev taken out of my hands and giving me a goalkeeper that I don't really need. Look, man, I, I genuinely, I think that's a, it's a good deal for everybody, but I don't know. Apparently let, not. Let apparently, us, yeah, apparently, let, let uh, us know in the comments, okay? Let us, let us know in the comments what you think. I, I, look, I, I'd, I'd give up. Make. I'd give up a story to know that I've got Safon, one of the best keepers in the league. That, he's 22 and he's got the rest of his career ahead of him. If you can keep him in that squad, you're set for ten years. No, I still a full okay. decade for that for that deal to take place. If I really like had to, I would I would want at least some money from you, and I would have to like deal with Akmat or one of those clubs and sell on at least two of these goalkeepers for that deal to make sense to me. But uh, this is a different rabbit. What's your third deal, Artem? What other club are you willing to scam? Well, no, this was a, the third deal was only if I got a goalkeeper, if I lost my goalkeeper. The third oh, deal, fine. You've lost let's, just let's just say yeah, that you, let's just say that you said just... Ozdoya for Safonov. Just, yeah, okay. let's just say you said yes. Yeah. I would have gone to Spartak and I would have said, look, you clearly have Maximenko who's playing there and you have two great keepers back up. But how, do you really need two good keepers in backup? Give me what? Selichov and oh, I'll okay. give you two million. That, that's it? That's it. That's all it would have been because I still believe that he's a great keeper and he's not going to get in that Spartak team. And I think yeah, that would okay, have... Okay, okay. It, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't have been as good as having Safonov in goals, but I think no, overall no, no, the Grasnodar no. attack team would have been strengthened if they had okay. small of a front. Okay, take Selikov and give me Denis Adamov. Okay. Yeah, that's it. I'll take that deal if, if, that's, if that's what you want. Okay. Oh, oh, brilliant. Okay, that's even... Yeah, yeah grand. See. I see. So on one deal, we sort of had to haggle a little bit. One deal we didn't really agree with at all. And now we just made a nice swap. Well, yeah, that was a nice little segment, in all honesty. <laughs> uh, good, good yeah, I, I enjoyed that, to be honest. I wouldn't mind doing that again next week yeah, when we're yeah. a team. But this time, fun. I'll let you be the buyer. I still yeah. think that I still think that Ozdoev for Safonov is a fair deal. To be honest, I said Ozdoev and Yurokin at the start because you would have been like two players for one, and then I would have said, "Okay, fine, just Ozdoev," but it didn't work. <laughs> yeah, and but but might put a poll out and ask the people, you know, what do you think of this deal? I think that's this and, is a yeah. Do you know what? Let us know what you think of this deal. But that's a uh, obviously it's not going to happen. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Good luck. 
It is what it is. It is what it is. The well, ghost still went to Freiburg, by the way. I don't. I didn't think we talked about that on air. Definitely talked about it off air. That's I think a really nice transfer for uh, all parties involved. Hope they can get some money out of that as well. And um, one last segment before we wrap up, and I've been wanting to talk about this. Artem mentioned it earlier in the pod. This is going to be probably our longest episode yet, but we still hope you enjoyed it. Is the Spurs documentary right? Adam, how much of that have you watched? None of it. None of it. Okay, well done. The only thing I've watched is the clip. I don't have Amazon Prime. Like, I should probably get it, but I don't have it. Yeah, no, have that's. You watched it? Yeah, I've watched it. They've released six episodes yet, and I feel like the documentary scene, like the football documentary scene, they've all become so formulaic and repetitive. And it's because this one is nearly identical to the Man City one. Uh, every football club is really different. They all go through different things. But in this, all that happens is there's a game. Mourinho's shouting. You know, he's doing his training. There might be a signing or something. They've they've really dumbed it down. They make it really surface level. I think Sunderland and Pauk uh, have two really good documentaries. Pauk, by the way, is free. You just need to go to their uh, over-the-top platform. Sign up there. I guess it's in English, yeah? Yeah. They've got subtitles and stuff. And a lot of it is in English anyway. Uh, but this is not related to Russian football, but Adam, what do you think of like the overall football documentary thing? Like the whole, uh, you know, concept of it, how do you think it can be improved? And what Russian club do you think you would like to see a documentary on if you've got like a preferred season or a preferred angle or anything? What would you go for? I mean, I think it's kind of sick, but I feel like for football documentaries to be good, like shit needs to be going down in the club. If everything's going well, not really. You don't really get the same amount of management that needs to be done, or anything like that. Even you don't get the same amount of drama. You know, when things are going badly at a club, like if you look at the Sunderland documentary, when things are going badly at Sunderland, you know players started threatening to leave. Um, you know, obviously, like a lot of shit was going down. Players started not believing in the manager. Some players yeah. still did. And it gave a real insight to, you know, the, the, the lows that you can get in football. Whereas I feel like when you're when you're doing well, like for example, let's say the City documentary. Um, I don't even know what season that was. I didn't watch it either. But I can only imagine that they were doing it fairly decent. Yeah. Um, so, like, you don't get the same emotion or anything. Because it's just like, oh yeah, we won again this week. I feel like they yeah. can be done well. They can be really interesting, but I think you need to have a mix of the highs and lows. But yeah. because it's football, you don't always get that. Sometimes mm-hmm. you have a season where it's all just lows, lows, and more lows. And mm-hmm. sometimes you have a season where it's all just highs. Um, it'd, be, it'd be good to track, track a team over five years or so, but I don't think any team would want that. It takes away from the football side of it. Like, at the end of the day, we all watch football for football. We don't watch it for the documentaries. Yeah. So, no, you know... You don't... Uh, on that, and I think there's a lot that, because the Michael Jordan documentary was amazing. You know, it's 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 not uh, it's not similar. It's not football, but the concept is slightly, you know, it is it is the same thing. It's it's pretty similar at the end of the day. And even the Spurs one, like Man City, their documentary I really liked because it was like the first one of its kind, and they yeah. had a record-breaking season, and they sort of made it interesting. But Spurs this season, they didn't have a great season. There were so many things to talk about. They lost seven-two in one game. Uh, they they had a lot of lot of like fun, interesting things that you could talk about, but the documentary just completely ignores and just runs over a lot of it. Like they don't talk about Mourinho's beef with Ndombele at all. The seven two loss is just like it's like a two minute segment on that, and then it, it's just like they've made it like a they've made it like it's like you know like. You know how them like sitcoms and stuff go on where it's like a workplace and they're sort of talking about it all day, every day. But yeah. even those are supposed to be funny. This this doesn't have any of that. Oh, look, a player's injured. How sad. Oh, look, the, the man's got a contract that's expiring. How sad. Oh, look, lost to Aston Villa. That's They've somehow managed to make a football club formulaic and even like the, the filmography is, is boring. But... I still think a lot can be done. Yeah, so what Russian club do you think you would like to see a documentary on? What season, maybe? I don't think I'd like to see it. Um, 
let, let me try and think if I had to formulate the sentence. I don't think I'd like to see a past season. I'd like to yeah. know that the, the, the documentary is going on while the season's going on. So I'm kind of like, oh, oh, I can't wait for this thing to happen and that. Yeah. You know? Um, I think I'd like to watch Spartak, to be honest. I think Tedesco mm-hmm. is a really interesting manager. Yeah. And there's a few very interesting players in there. Um, and obviously, they're doing well at the moment, but they could have a few dodgy uh, results here and there. Um, yeah. Similarly, I'd like to see Locomotive because yeah. no doubt they're going to have highs and lows in the season. Melting down. Yeah, yeah. and they, they too have a few good characters. Um, so, I think like Russian football anyway has a lot of storylines. Like with Dynamo, they're sort of you know being a resurgent force now. Uh, Rostov are, are quite interesting. CSK have a lot of new sites. So there, there are a lot of storylines in every club that you could explore. I just guess it's it's about how well you do it, you know. And yeah, that's the thing. It, it all depends on that. All like, for that. example, I really like watching Zenit's YouTube videos, the Resdivalka, yeah. the dressing room ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they're really good. They give an insight to that. But, like, the, yeah, could you make that into a documentary form? You probably could. Probably could. If it's done well, it would be great. But would it be done well? Let's say. Yeah, that's the thing. But um, anyway, I think that wraps it up. I think we've had quite a loaded episode this week, even though there wasn't that much football, only two games to cover. Talked about everything from transfers to documentaries to stuff I don't even remember now. Uh, but we hope you enjoyed this episode. We're going to try and make the podcast as, as good as possible for you. Uh, we're going to explore getting guests on very soon. Next episode, hopefully. And let us know what you thought of this episode. Let us know if you liked any of our segments, what you'd like us to change. And uh, yeah, Artem, run it off. Yeah, I think Hanu said everything he needs to say there. So if you enjoyed this episode, please leave a like, comment below. We're still looking for a name, by the way. So oh, yeah, tweet us or comment below. Um, you're, if you have a good name, you're in with a chance to, uh, to win two months free, a uh, Russian football YouTube subscription. So, yeah. um, and as always, um, see you next week. Yeah.